Hello and welcome to this episode of the Print On Demand Playbook Podcast. I'm your host, Kerry Egler, and I'm pumped because today we're doing a something a little bit different. We're actually going to take you inside a recent private training session that Adrian actually did at my Launcher Brand Challenge. Now, we had over 8,000 people register for this challenge. It was one of the biggest events we've ever done at my company called Shirt School, and Adrian absolutely brought the fire. So today you're going to be listening to 10 tips for success from a seven-figure apparel brand owner. You're going to love it. So before we dive in, here's a quick word from our sponsor. This episode is brought to you by Gelato, the world's largest print-on-demand network. Gelato enables individuals ranging from e-commerce entrepreneurs to artists and creatives to establish their own global business. What makes Gelato truly unique is their focus on local production. The item being delivered is produced in the country that the order is placed almost 90% of the time, leading to numerous benefits for you, including lower costs, faster delivery times, and reduced carbon emissions. The focus on technology to bring together over 130 production facilities across 32 countries truly sets them apart. Not only that, they currently have the highest customer satisfaction score in the POD industry on Trustpilot. To check them out for yourself, go to sixfigurefounder.com backslash gelato and use the discount code POD playbook, all caps, to get 60% off your first order when placed within 72 hours. That's the number six figurefounder.com backslash G E L A T O. You can also find the link and discount code in the podcast show notes or in the video description on YouTube. We're excited to dive in. I really want to leave the floor to you. I know I, I don't want to steal your thunder, but sure. what you're going to share today is um, is the the secrets to seven figure owning a seven figure apparel brand. And right. uh, I know this, man, this is a value packed presentation. So I'm just going to ask you guys, uh, I'm going to let Adrian take the floor, but I'm just gonna ask you guys lock in some of the things he, some of the things he's going to say in this presentation will literally give you the chills up and down your spine because they're so impactful. So helpful. I have pages of notes from when I've heard him speak on these things before. And uh, so I'm very excited. So Adrian, without further ado, take it away, man. Top 10. Let's do it. Awesome. All right. Let's just jump right in. So this is what I call the top 10 tips for success from a seven figure t-shirt brand owner. And I am not holding anything back here, guys. So I hope that this, I hope that you guys find this super helpful, super valuable. And, um, I just, I, I'm just, I'm just honored, man. I'm just happy to be here and grateful for you guys. So let's just jump right into it. Tip number one, take action and stay consistent. You guys probably hear this all the time but you hear it all the time because it freaking works. There's a really powerful Denzel Washington quote that I absolutely love where he says, without commitment, you'll never start, but without consistency, you'll never finish. And I absolutely believe that. It's very rare when you're starting out that you're gonna go from like zero to a hundred overnight. It, there's very, very rare kind of one in a million situations when that happens. But to be brutally honest, early designs, early website, all this stuff, like it's going to take some time to kind of understand your brand, understand your niche, understand what they want. And at the beginning, your designs, for example, they might be kind of terrible. Mine were absolutely horrible when I first started. It is absolutely cringy looking at my original designs. But with consistency, with constantly dropping new designs, you're actually going to better understand what your target audience, what your ideal customer wants, and you're going to optimize your designs over time for them. So what I recommend is at the beginning, don't worry so much about the designs. Don't overthink it. Just get designs out there, see the feedback, see how people are reacting and responding. And the more you get out there, the faster you're going to understand what your customers want and your designs will improve over time. And it's not only designs, it's really everything. So real quick, when I first started in the t-shirt and apparel space, I had no clue what I was doing. I literally just spent hours on end on YouTube and Google trying to figure out 
all these strategies. I got together with two other friends who also started at the same time as me. And we were just like the blind leading the blind. We had no clue what we were doing. Our businesses weren't going anywhere. I started in a niche that I knew literally nothing about and it completely failed. Surprise, surprise. I never made a single sale. It was only when we actually invested in coaching, training, mentorship, and a community through a program that had that tried and tested roadmap that we were able to really take off. So when I say take action and commit to staying consistent, take action and commit to the strategy. You shouldn't have to guess here. This is, there should be no guessing. And just to loop back to that story of me and those friends who were the blind leading the blind, within one year of investing in coaching, every single one of us had a six figure brand every single one of us. And that is not coincidence. This, this was a result of strategy, not luck. I always tell people that it, there's no luck here. It's, it's strategy. We just followed a strategy and you guys, if you follow this strategy, you can see the same results. I am nothing special. I was fired from my first job out of college. My first t-shirt business was a complete failure. I have extreme ADD. I, I like, I am nothing special here. I think a lot of people, probably most of you on this call are more capable than I am. And that's why I'm here to tell you that if you follow a proven tried and tested roadmap, just like I did, you guys can see results like I did too. So I hope that you guys find that encouraging. Um, in terms of consistency, I want to share kind of three core pillars that I focus on that have always been a total game changer for my business. One of them is consistently dropping new designs. So commit to a number of new designs that you want to drop on a monthly basis and don't overthink it. Do not overthink it. Just commit to a number. I recommend 10 if possible. And some might find that super overwhelming, but what I will tell you is that the designs, every single six figure design that I've ever created was super simple simple cells. They were super simple. My most successful design of all time was purely text-based. It was a purely text-based design. And I made over $277,000 in 60 days with that design. That, so what I'm saying here is don't overcomplicate this 10 designs. You could just do 10 slogans if you want. Uh, so consistently drop, uh, focus on dropping new designs. Secondly, Content creation on, use content creation on social media to grow your community and market your products. Social media has been a total game changer for me. It is always what I have built the back, built my business on and is still what I build my business on today. And you guys are very lucky. We're all very lucky. We live in such an amazing time where there is this free platform where we can put our content on. And if it's good enough, it will get pushed out to people for free. So I use a mix of paid and free ads to drive traffic to my website. And then the third pillar that I strongly recommend is email marketing. Use email marketing to promote your products and encourage repeat sales. So it's said that the, the money is in the repeat sales. And I totally agree because a lot of times when you are running ads, uh, there's going to be a cost per acquisition. You're, you're paying to run ads if you're running paid ads to acquire a customer. So they're going to be a little less profitable from that first sale. However, if you remarket to them through email, they become more profitable every time because you paid that one time cost per acquisition. And now you're using this super cost effective a uh, marketing channel, email marketing to continue making sales from these people. And don't be surprised if you have a, a niche that people are super passionate about and you are dropping uh, emotion evoking and relatable designs, you're going to have customers buy like seven, eight, nine, ten 10 times. And that is just like printing money. So that is kind of my three core pillars that I recommend for consistency. These are three things that I highly recommend committing to one drop new designs every single month Two, market your designs on social media and three use email marketing to promote your products and uh, encourage repeat sales. So that's, that's really it. That's a process that has always worked for me. I know that if I do that, 
it's only a matter of time before I, I find that next winner. That's, that's really what I'm looking for. I am looking for a winning design. It only takes one to completely change your business and completely change your life. So I hope that that's super helpful. And that is, that is only step one, guys. So I'm going to jump into tip two. This is what I'm talking about. I just kind of go off on these tangents, but there's so much I just want to share. So step number two or tip number two is test before you invest. So if any of you guys are thinking about um, creating products from a home or having them fulfilled by a local screen printer, something like that, I, I, I don't necessarily discourage that, but I would discourage it up front. So I always recommend starting with print on demand, at least until you have proof of concept. It's low risk, it's low cost, and it's the fastest way to start an online t-shirt apparel brand. So what I recommend is that every single person start with print on demand. Both businesses I started, so I actually, my first business, I was able to get it to six figures within eight months after starting a coaching program. And then I started a second one that I was able to get to six figures in 14 months. And that was actually a side hustle because it was a business that I started on the side with my brother while I was running my other business, uh, which is the seven figure brand. So both of those businesses, I started exclusively with print on demand. And if I started one today, I would absolutely start with print on demand again, both businesses, uh, what I did was I just stuck with the print on demand business model. And then the one that became the seven figure brand, I actually did eventually start outsourcing our best selling designs to a local screen printer because there are some benefits there. So the profit margins are a little bit better and you can ship to your customers faster because they're pre-made, but the downside is that every single time you place an order with a screen printer, you're putting what well, we're putting thousands upon thousands of dollars down and you never know how long it's going to take to recover that. So our process, and this is kind of thinking down the road. So don't, don't, you know, don't overthink this. Our process is we always start with print on demand. We reward the winners, the six figure designs. Those are the ones that we will have locally screen printed. Uh, and we don't reward the ones that don't, uh, perform well. So some they're going to sell kind of organically here and there, but they're going to be very difficult to scale. Um, and then others are just going to be total flops and we have flops. Everybody has flops. Uh, those we essentially usually just remove from our website and then continue dropping new designs. So we're always filtering out, filtering in new designs and filtering out poor performing designs. So I strongly recommend starting with print on demand. Now, the third tip, and this one is so, so big, and I think this is gonna be really relevant. I hope this is really relevant to a lot of you guys here is niche down. You probably hear this all the time. Carrie probably told you this, but really guys, the riches are in the niches. If you haven't heard that before, that is just couldn't be more true. It is so, so true. And I really don't want you guys to get caught in the trap of trying to create products that appeal to everyone. It is a huge mistake in my opinion, and it is going to make things much more challenging for you to make sales, not to mention getting passionate raving fans. And I heard a really cool, I heard something really cool lately. Someone said, uh, passion plus products equals profits. And I was like, oh my God, this this person knows what they're talking about. That is so, so true. And so what you want to do is you want to focus on one niche, put all your energy into creating products for that niche, serve that niche, offer them value, give them designs that create emotion and relatability, and they will reward you with their dollars. So I highly recommend niching down. The fourth tip is focus on constantly releasing designs and keep them simple. Like I said, simple sells. No matter how good your website is, your branding, your customer support, or your social media, if your designs suck, you're gonna struggle to make sales. My designs were terrible when I first started, so bad. I think I launched my brand, I did. I launched my brand with 50 designs and not a single one was a winner. I mean. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know my niche very well, but over time 
I was able to learn more about them, optimize my designs. And that's the brand that turned into a six figure brand in eight months. I launched with 50 designs, not a single winner. And then eight months later is a six figure brand. So in terms of keeping design simple, most designs are going to be a total shot in the dark and you only know if it's a winner if you release it. So whether you spend 10 minutes or 10 hours on a design, the likelihood of it being a winner is probably the same. Although I've actually always found that the simpler ones performed better. So I would discourage anyone from spending a lot of time creating really complex designs. Believe me, I've done it. I've made that mistake so many times. It's never paid off for me personally. Um, but this is a good thing. This is, this is amazing because if you're dropping simple designs that evoke emotion and relatability for your niche, you're going to be able to drop a lot since they're so simple. Uh, I have dropped literally hundreds of designs over the years and every single winning design has been very simple and most of them have been purely text-based or they just had some tiny little uh, icon or tiny little image that made it like a little bit unique. But I have a friend who started a seven figure t-shirt brand in 2020 and almost every single design on her website, including all of her winners are purely text-based. So I'm telling you guys, you can start a six, you can, you can have a six or a seven figure brand with just purely text-based designs. So it, I, I highly recommend just focus on consistently releasing new designs and keep them simple. Tip number five is let your customers vote with their dollars. Something that I see happen to a lot of people, and this has totally happened to me before, I'm absolutely guilty of this, is that you get attached to your designs. So you create this design, you're like, this is fire. This design is a sure hit, it's a winner. You drop it and it's just crickets. Can anyone relate? Like I've been there so many times. And then on the opposite end of the spectrum, there have been designs that I was actually wary about even dropping because I was like, oh, eh, you know, I don't think this design is anything special. I don't really think my niche is going to like it. And then I drop it and surprisingly, it far outperforms the designs that I thought were going to be winners. So if a design flops, do not take it personally. That's totally fine. If this happens, which it happens to everybody, just quickly move on and keep releasing designs until you find that winner. I always tell people it only takes one. You are always one design away. I'm telling you this happens all the time for people. They get one design and they're a six figure brand. They are a six figure brand. And it's really crazy. I still remember um, when I started my second t-shirt business, I was kind of going through the motions. It was in the dog niche. And I didn't know actually a lot about the dog niche. Fortunately, my brother was a dog owner and lover. So that's probably why we were successful. But I still remember for that business, one month we did $5,800 in sales. And that was prior to releasing a winning design. So some might think that's a lot. Some might think that's not much at all. But get this, the next month where we released that design, and it wasn't like we released that design on the first. I think we released that design maybe mid-month or something like that. We went from $5,800 the next month, we went to $28,000. And the next month we went to $52,000. And the next month we went to $143,000 in sales in a single month. Within a 60 day period, we had made over $277,000 in sales. It was absolutely insane. And that is the power of a winning design combined with social media advertising and the scalability of print on demand. Because if we weren't doing print on demand, we would have sold out so fast. We would have so many issues with inventory and we surely would not have made nearly as many sales. So I just want to kind of share that little case study, that little story with you guys to show you, give you a, a taste of what it's like when you find that winning design. Like just imagine, imagine that you find that winning design and overnight you start seeing sales just pour in. You wake up in the morning and you have all of these notifications on Shopify telling you made sales. You look at your bank account and it's just grown so much. Every single day it's going up. That is, that is the feeling. That is the feeling. And if you can kind of 
put yourself there and think about that. I hope you can use that as, as motivation because it only takes one design. That is it. I hope and I'm sure that you will come out with many and you should. I encourage it. You should always be dropping new designs, but one winner will take you to six figures. One winner. And I know that Carrie talks a lot about design, design creation, creating designs through AI, like he, he makes it so easy to, to get designs out there on your products and in front of your audience. So um, if you guys haven't checked out that section of the program, it is fire. Uh, all right, where am I? I think I was on step number, that was step number five, let your customers vote with their dollars. All right, step number six, choose one main channel to acquire customers and choose one main channel to retain customers. So let me explain this just a little bit in case anyone's confused. I call the first, I call it a primary acquisition channel. So what I recommend is starting with social media since it's free and there are a number of ways to get in front of a lot of people, connect with niche specific communities and chat directly with your ideal customer. So. What I recommend is choosing one social media channel as your primary acquisition channel. The whole purpose of that channel is to acquire customers, grow your following and drive traffic to your website. That's all you need. You don't need 10 social media platforms. You don't need to be on every single social media out there. You only need to be really good at one. So what I recommend is committing to one. Usually it's where you think your ideal customer hangs out and then commit to dominating that one channel. You can definitely have a presence on others. So let's say that you make Instagram your primary acquisition channel. That's the primary acquisition channel for my seven figure brand. And what you can do is you can create all your content for Instagram first, become an Instagram expert, grow your community on Instagram, and then you can easily repurpose that to other platforms but I don't recommend creating a bunch of native content on a bunch of native platforms because then you kind of just become a jack of all trades and a master of none. All you need to do is be really, really good at one platform. And then you, you will, as a spillover effect, you will grow on those other platforms. And there's even apps that make this so easy today. You've got Hootsuite, you've got Planoly, these apps where you can create content and then it'll automatically push it to other platforms. So in terms of social media, I want to share with you guys what I see is the hottest platforms right now. And there are two, in my opinion, the two hottest sales channels. And I recommend choosing one of these two as your primary acquisition channel personally is Instagram and TikTok. But what you want to do is you want to learn where your audience congregates. And if you identify with your niche, which is awesome. That's going to make, not only is that going to make it a lot more fun, but it's going to be a lot more easy to create content and designs that evoke emotion and relatability because those will, those will evoke emotion and relatability for you. So what I recommend doing is finding out where your ideal target audience is congregating and then committing to dominating on that platform. And for, uh, for me, TikTok and Instagram have been the absolute most powerful. There are, but different channels work well for different people. For example, if you're targeting Gen Z, TikTok, maybe Snapchat, there's some new ones like Lemonade and, and, and Clapper, but I would not worry about those at all. Uh, the only ones that I would recommend even considering were Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. Those are like the three that I would put your primary focus in. Uh, but if you're targeting baby boomers, maybe Facebook is going to be where they hang out. I definitely do recommend having a presence on Facebook, even if it's not your primary acquisition channel. And what I love about Facebook is that they have a lot of really powerful niche specific communities, private communities that you can join and you can understand your niche. You can share your designs with your niche. You can sell to those people. There's so much you can do with it. So you can even create one yourself if you want, but, what I recommend is starting with one primary acquisition channel, choose whatever primary acquisition channel you think would be best for your audience and then focus on that. And then the second part of that is choose one primary retention channel. So by retention, I mean, choose a platform with the sole purpose of retaining customers, of 
keeping those customers and uh, remarketing to them to get them purchasing again and again and again. And the two most popular retention channels are hands down email marketing and SMS. I use both, but I started with email and I recommend that you start with email. I think email is so powerful. Anyone that you said, anyone that says email is dead is not marketing effectively because email is absolutely alive and well. And there are so many ways that you can use it to get your customers coming back again and again. So what I recommend is starting with email and then down the road is kind of a phase two, then you can introduce SMS. So this is what you will use to remarket to your customers. The fortune is in the follow-up. So there's gonna be people that subscribe to your email list and they haven't bought yet. And what you can do is you can remarket to them if they abandoned, if they added an item to their cart and for some reason they weren't able to complete their purchase, you can send them a reminder email and with technology today, with email technology today, it'll show them that exact product that they had put in their car and send them a reminder and they can, they can buy it. And many times they do. So we shouldn't assume that when someone doesn't complete a purchase, that it's because they didn't want to complete a purchase. We live in a very disruptive world. There are always things, there are always things coming up. We're always getting phone calls. And so, I always say selling a service. You are reminding someone through email that they left something in their car. And a lot of times they're going to come back and they're going to purchase it because that was their intention. In most cases, that's why they added it to their car. So just to recap that point number six, choose one primary acquisition channel. This would be social media. Choose a social media platform that you are going to dominate. And then secondly, choose one retention channel that you're going to dominate. And this is stuff that Kerry teaches in his program. Like you don't need to guess here. I, I, I recommend that you don't guess, just choose the platform and then use the strategies that you're taught to become a, an expert in those platforms. Number seven, do not, please do not compete on price. Whew, there's so much I have to say about this, but I'm just going to try to sum this up as best as possible. Competing on price is a race to the bottom that you will never win as someone will always be willing to sell their t-shirts or apparel for less. It's just the nature of the business. Some people will literally take a loss just to crush their competition, but that's not how it works because People that are just buying based on price are not actually people that you want as your customers. So this is kind of a mindset shift for a lot of people, but I've had people ask me like, how do you compete with people selling their shirts for $10? I'm like, you don't, you do not compete with people selling their shirts for $10. You should not consider them their, your competitors since their target audience should not be your target audience you don't need to sell your products for really cheap. In fact, a lot of it actually discourages a lot of sales because a lot of people, when they see a, a product that's that cheap, they just automatically assume that it's trash. They automatically assume that it's low quality. They're probably gonna be super unhappy with it. And what you want to do is you want to just kind of break free of that. You don't want to compete with these people. Let those $10 shirt sellers, fight for the scraps at the bottom. I don't know what kind of profit margins they're making, but it's probably not very good. What you want to do is you want to instead focus on value, on perceived value. And instead of luring people in with low prices, you can really increase your perceived value of your products and your brand in so many ways. You can do strategic branding. You can have a, having a very well-defined niche alone is enough. For example, let's say that you are really passionate about nature. And let's say that there is a clothing brand that is also very passionate about nature. They're very committed and maybe they donate part of their proceeds to nature and they just offer a lot of value for kind of that community. If they're selling a shirt uh, and then you see that same shirt at Walmart, who do you think the people, the, the, the very passionate niche is going to want to support. They're going to want to support the people that actually care about the environment there. I, I would 
much rather support those people than I would support Walmart for the exact same thing, because I know that that's not their focus. That's not their niche. They're just a big general store that sells anything and everything. So um, finding ways to provide value to your community. This is another way to increase your perceived value, creating high quality, attractive designs that evoke emotion and relatability, using high quality imagery, creating high quality products, having a high, uh, a user friendly conversion optimized website, having incredible customer service, excuse me, having lots of social proof, such as user generated content, customer testimonials, photos of your customers, a thorough FAQ and trust badges. These are all ways that you can receive, uh, increase your perceived value. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. There are so many other ways that you can do this and people will pay more. I know personally, I would never buy a shirt online for $10. I just wouldn't trust it. I would, I would probably think it was a scam. Um, and I just wouldn't do it. I would definitely pay more if I trusted the website, trusted the brand. And if I actually felt like I identified with that brand and they knew me, they understood me and that should be your job. That should be your, your goal. So there are so many ways to increase your perceived value. So you do not have to compete on compete on price. Uh, number eight is think long term and treat this like a legitimate business and not a get rich quick scheme. I, I don't think you guys think this is a get rich quick scheme. I, I don't. I think that you guys are clearly action takers. You're clearly driven or you wouldn't, wouldn't be here right now with us, listening to us and seriously consider becoming an entrepreneur if you're not already. But I think a lot of people kind of get caught up in the, you know, the, the quick wins like, oh, I need to see results right away. Nobody sees results right away. The most successful people I know in this space did not see results right away. They followed a proven, tried and tested roadmap. They did not give up and they eventually saw results. Some people will see results really quick. Some people it's going to take a bit longer. It will happen for you if you stick with it. I think the number one reason people fail in this space is because they quit. And I think one of the biggest reasons is because those people have a very short term mentality. But think of it like any business, any business when you start, it's, it's very hard to be profitable right out of the gate, making all these sales go from zero to six figures in 30 days. I don't know anyone that's done that. And a lot of physical like brick and mortar businesses, they actually lose money. Even e-commerce businesses might lose money for a while before they start making money. This, we're lucky with this business model. I'm so grateful that Print On Demand exists because it just makes it so low risk for us. We're not holding any inventory. We're not buying any inventory. We're not spending our time printing and packing and shipping orders. Instead, we can invest that time on revenue generating activity, like creating super cool designs for our ideal customer and marketing our products. So we're, we're in a very lucky position, but I do still want you to think long-term. So a lot of people, you know, when they think about this, uh, not only is it that, uh, you know, this business model, there's, there's actually so many places it can go. Um, and I think a lot of people only think about it as just selling your t-shirts, but I actually want to kind of help you guys think outside the box and share some other ideas of where this business can go for you. There are actually so many ways to make money in this business. One, you can do wholesale. Two, you can get into retail stores. I actually know someone who started a print on demand business. I believe she was using Printify. And that brand is now available on a ton of products in Walmart retail stores all over the country. Her, the, the brand is called Afro Unicorn. And if you go to your local Walmart, you'll probably see it there. Yeah, she started out in print on demand, just like us, just like you guys are. And she is now like a household name all from starting on print on demand. A lot of people don't think about this, but there's so many places this can go. And this is why I want you guys to think long term. Don't just think about the sales. And, you know, there, there's so many other ways that you can monetize. Another thing you can do that a lot of people don't know is that you can license your designs to other companies. I have a friend who's in the dog niche, who has a super successful brand. 
And they actually license their brand and their designs to multiple other brands, including Skechers, the shoe company. Uh, you can make affiliate commissions through your clothing brand. So you can partner with other products or services, and then you can get commissions from them when people convert. And you can do this by sending things to your email list. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to do it. Uh, you can do paid collaborations. You can make money from sponsored posts. You can sell your business. So I don't know if I mentioned this, but my second business that I started, the one that I grew to six figures in 14 months with my brother as a side hustle, I sold that. I sold that right around the two year mark, I believe it was. And um, it was amazing. I couldn't believe it. I was like, wow, I, I started this business, grew to six figures and sold it all within two years. And then I just went back to focusing on my seven figure brand full time. It was amazing. And then I had this huge amount of savings from that brand that I was able to, was just able to create a lot more freedom in my life. So there are so many great opportunities, but if you treat this like a get rich quick scheme and you do not get rich quick, guess what's going to happen? You're going to quit because you didn't get rich quick. And I just highly, highly, highly encourage you to think long term, think long term. All right, step number, step number nine, invest in yourself and follow a proven tried and tested strategy. So Warren Buffett put it best. I'm a huge Warren Buffett fan. If anyone else is, he's, he's awesome. Uh, he put it best when he said the best investment you'll ever make is in yourself. If you truly want to succeed at this, invest in training, mentorship, and coaching. Think of it like going to the gym. If you're new to the gym and you're serious about getting results, one of the best and fastest ways to get your dream body is to invest in a personal trainer or a coach. This same rule applies for starting a business, for starting a clothing brand, and maybe even more since things are constantly changing in the space and you want to be very quick to adapt. When I started out, I had literally no clue what I was doing. I spent so many hours on Google and YouTube, like I mentioned earlier, and it resulted in failure. I was, it was only when I invested in coaching that my business began to take off. Myself and those other two t-shirt business owners, we all invested in coaching. And like I said, within a year, we were all six, six figure brand owners. Do you think that's a coincidence? No, it's, it is not a coincidence. This is, this is by design. We, we had a strategy. We followed the strategy. It was proven. Other people were becoming six and seven figure business owners from this strategy. And we were able to do the same. We're nothing special. There was no magic. It was just that we had a tried and tested strategy that's pumped out a lot of six and seven figure t-shirt brand owners. And that's exactly what we did. So I, I actually wish I had a statistic on this, but what I can say based on empirical evidence, based on my network of all the people I've met, I've been doing this since 2016, and I've met so many six and seven figure t-shirt brand owners over the years. Every single one I've met, every single one invested in coaching. And I have met a ton throughout the years. I've never met one that didn't. And if you meet a six or seven figure business owner, I challenge you to ask them. Ask them if they learn from a coach because I've never met someone that didn't, someone that just tried to go it alone and do it themselves. I tried that. It didn't work. I could learn from me. I wasted so much time and money wasted on poor marketing strategies that I wish I knew better from. And what I will say is, you know, I have invested tens of thousands of dollars into coaching over the years, and I still invest in coaching to this day. I also invest in general e-commerce coaching uh, and then a coach the coach kind of, or uh, how to be a coach program as well. I'm a member of multiple coaching programs because I don't know everything and things are always changing. So I want to be learning from, from those people. Uh, and the last thing I'll say about that is the program that we invested in. So me and those other t-shirt business owners, when we first started, I believe I'm almost positive we paid $5,000 for that program. It was pretty brutal, but it was enough. It was enough. It was a good enough roadmap to get us where we needed to go. And it has paid itself off over and over and multiple times over multiple times over. And every single time I find a new winner and make a whole bunch of sales and scale that up, it just pays itself off by tenfold again. You know what I mean? So uh, that was literally one of the best decisions I ever made. And I wouldn't be here right now if I didn't make that decision. I, I probably would be 
spinning my wheels on my 10th, 10th business trying to make it work. Number 10, the final tip is do not quit before the miracle. There is a very good quote that I heard, and I've shared this with Carrie before, and it just gives us goosebumps when we hear this quote. It goes, if you think the price of winning is too high, wait until you get the bill for regret. There, I, I, I promise you guys, if you don't see results fast, there's gonna be times where you're frustrated and there's probably gonna be times when you wanna give up. There was a lot of times where I wanted to give up, but as tempting as it might be at times, you have to keep reminding yourself, you are always just one design away from the next level. Imagine if you dropped 49 designs and none of them were winners and you decided to hell with this. I'm done, I'm out, it's, I'm just not cut out for it. And little did you know, if you could have a crystal ball and see in the future that that 50th design was gonna be the design that took you to six figures or even seven figures, man, that would be devastating. That would be devastating. I, would, I wouldn't even want you to have that crystal ball. But this is what I'm saying is you are always just one design away. And I want to encourage you guys when times get tough, when you feel like giving up, when, when, when you're struggling, when you're, you're struggling with self-doubt and believe, just remind yourself, write it down, put it somewhere that it's visible, put it on your monitor. Like I am always one design away. And just keep dropping those designs. And I promise if you do not give up and if you keep dropping designs and keep learning what your audience wants, you will get there and you will succeed. And you're going to be so proud of yourself. You're going to be so incredibly proud of yourself. It only takes one winning design to dramatically improve your sales, to completely transform your business and really to completely transform your life. This could happen for you early on, or it could take some time. But if you keep going and don't quit, it will happen. So think long-term, stick with the strategy, follow a proven tried and tested roadmap. And I know that you guys can be successful. If I can be successful, you can absolutely be successful. I am not the smartest person in every room. I told you guys I had lots of failures. I have ADHD, I, like I'm nothing special. If I can do this, you guys absolutely can too. So I want to just kind of in closing, I know I've gone over, I had so many more notes, but I uh, just have that tendency to go over. So I'm gonna kind of wrap this up here. I wanna leave you with this. There is always room for great new t-shirt and apparel brands, always. And I just wanna remind you again that you are always just one design away. So I wish you guys all the best in your journey. I hope that you guys take action. I hope that you guys stay consistent and I can't wait to hear about the results. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Print on Demand Playbook Podcast. We truly hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please, if you could leave us an honest review on whichever platform you are listening from, that would be greatly appreciated. Thank you so much again, and we will see you very soon.